Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the tutorial 25 of the series Visual Effects for Games in Unity. And today we are going to see how to create projectiles, something similar to this. What we are seeing here are actually some projectiles that are part of the package Unique Projectiles Volume 1, which is available at Asset Store and in my Patreon. Links are in the description, go check it out, they are awesome. But today we are specifically going to see how to create this projectile. We will see how to create the projectile itself, the muzzle flash and the heat impact effect as well. And we will create some scripts for the projectile to move, where we can control the speed and the fire rate. So let's see how we can do this. So first things first, my scene is very simple. What I have is a sphere which contains this small cube and a fire point. And obviously the fire point is where the projectile is going to be shoot from. Alright, the other things is lights and camera, not really important for this tutorial. So let's start off by creating an empty and renaming this, for instance, to Visual Effects Projectile Tutorial or something. Inside it we want to create a particle system, I'm going to rename it to Beam. It's going to have the duration of, of 0.5 for now. And the start speed is going to be 0, the start lifetime is going to be 0.5 and it's going to have pre-warm turn on. Pre-warm is really useful when we are using rate over time, this way the particle system will start emitting particles as soon as it is awake. Let's just turn off shape. And let's set the rate over time to 2. And we just want some color of a lifetime to make this blink. I want to insert a key in the middle and make the alpha 0 like this. Good. Next step, we actually need a 3D software. Either you use Blender 3ds, Max, Maya, whatever. What we want to create starts with a cube where we extrude the extremities like this with E, if you are using Blender of course, and then with S we want to scale this to zero like this. Alright, looking good. Now we want to select everything with A and with double V we want to choose remove doubles. And now we only have one vertice in the extremity. Great. Now let's scale this up a little bit, alright. And let's go to object mode, select our object, press Ctrl A and select scale and then rotation then location. Alright, looking good. Now next step is to actually select edges and select these edges right here and press Ctrl E. So we can choose mark sim and what this will do is that if we select everything with A and press U, we can select unwrap. Let's just open a new window for the UV image editor. And maybe the UVs are a little bit skewed, a little bit distorted. You will need to align it just like this. And you can center this in the middle of the UV map, basically. Let's just rename our mesh to projectile tooth, in this case, like this. And we want to export this as an FBX. And as you can see, I already have one. You can export it to Unity. Once you are in Unity, as you can see, I have my projectile here. Great. You can delete the materials folder if you want. You don't need that. All right. So now that we have our projectile mesh, we want to duplicate our beam particle system and rename it to projectile. And the first thing we want to change here is the render mode. We want to switch it to mesh. And here now we can drag and drop our projectile that we have created. And as you can see, it's really tiny. In my case, it really depends in your case and software you have used. It. That's no problem. Just change the render alignment to local. And let's increase the size in the start size. Maybe 5, maybe 10. As you know, it depends on what you want to achieve. And I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees on the X and only on the X. Just like this. Great. And we can control the size if we use 3D start size. As you can see, we can make it longer, we could make it thinner, or we can make it random between 10 and 11 in my case, to make this just a little bit random each time it spawns a new projectile. Alright, we are going well. Let's select both of our particle systems and choose a random color or only one color, it's up to you. I'm gonna select some orange reddish colors, as you can see. And in projectile turn on 3D start rotation, make it random between 360 and minus 360. So every time it spawns a new project, it will have a different rotation and different size. 
let's just come down here and select rotation over lifetime where we want to turn on separate axis and it's going to rotate in the same axis which is the y axis i'm gonna make it 720 like this it's fine all right, so this is looking a little bit simple or projected to be honest and what we really want to do is to go to our 3D software and export our UV map so we can import it to Photoshop and in Blender you can export UV layout just like this give it a name, save it somewhere, you can also choose the size and once you are in your image editing software you can import that UV map from the projectile, you know and in Photoshop we can create a new layer with Ctrl Shift N and now we can paint the background to black like this we're just gonna rename this layer to UV and I'm going to block the background and the UV map so we don't paint on those layers and I'm going to create a new layer with Ctrl Shift N and this time what we want to do is painting this border right here and the middle border like this and start sketching how do we want our projector to look of course I can't force your hand, I can only give you a few tips, but I usually start with a bigger brush to line out how my sketch is going to be and then I start going to smaller brushes and create details and then with the erase tool I also start erasing some spots like this alright and now the really cool thing comes when we use the smudge tool which will allow us to push those whites and distort them into something cool like this and we want to keep distorting, maybe paint a bit more with the brush you know until you are satisfied with what you have and then you can simply duplicate the layer and in edit transform we want to select flip vertical and this way we will have a symmetrical texture which is fine for our projectile and of course never forget that I'm just giving you a few ideas, a few tricks for you to get started working on your projectiles. And now we can select these two layers and press Ctrl E to merge them. Now if you double click on this layer we can turn on outer glow and we can increase a little bit the size maybe make the opacity a little bit lower until you have something like this. Alright, now when you think it's looking good, you can hide the black background, hide the UV map and export as a PNG to Unity. Now back to Unity, we want to create a new material, which can have the same name as the texture. Let's change the shader of the material to Mobile Particles Additive or simply Particles Additive. And we can drag and drop our texture to the slot and drop the material to, to our projector. And yes, it's definitely looking much better. The texture makes a difference, which is really worth it. And to spice this up, now let's create a trail in effects, just like this. And a trail really looks good in a projectile. We can set the time to 0.15, change this curve to something similar like this, and we can set the Y to 0.3. And we will see everything in action in just a moment. Now, this color is a gradient and the left of the gradient represents the part that is closer to our projectile and the right represents what's left behind and we want to reduce a little bit the alpha in the left key and we, in the right key we want to set the alpha to pretty much zero now we can set the color of our left key to a darker orange and in the right key to a lighter orange and to see this in action we can drag around our trail but since we have set the time to 0.15, we can't see how it's looking because it shrinks really fast. And what we can do is set the time to 1 second or more just to see how the trail is looking. And what we can see is that the beginning is thicker and the end is thinner and that's thanks to our curve that we have created. We can also reduce a little bit the wide, at least in my case. Alright, that's looking interesting. Now let's set back the time to 0.15 or 0.2 It really depends on the speed of your projectile, by the way So that's something that I'm going to leave to you And now, just in case you didn't create a prefab out of this projectile I really recommend that you create one now So let's go ahead and create a script that will enable us to spawn our projectiles And we can call it spawn projectiles 
And what we need is a public game object called Firepoint, which is where our projectile is going to spawn. And then we want to create a public list of game objects called VFX. This list is useful when you have more than one projectile. And we need a private game object called Effect Spawn. And in the start, the effect spawn is going to be equal to the first effect in the list. Now in the update, we want to check if we click mouse 1. At least in this case, you can use another input. And we want to call a, a function called spawn visual effect, which we are going to create down here with the same name, of course. And we are going to create a local game object called visual effect. And we say that if the fire point is different than null, then we want to spawn our effects. Otherwise, we can debug that there is no fire point. So let's say visual effects equals instantiate the effect to spawn in the fire point transform dot position with quaternion dot identity. So let's save this. Let's go to inspector, see how this is working. We can assign this script to the scene. Let's add one element to the visual effect list. And let's go to our sphere and let's assign the fire point. Just like this. Great. Now let's press play and as soon as we click mouse 1, it will instantiate a projectile as you can see. Alright, looking good. Now that the projectile is already spawning, let's create another script to make the projectile move. So let's call this one projectile move. And in this one, we want to create the public float speed and the public float fire rate. In the update, we want to say that if the speed is different than zero, else debug.log no speed. So if the speed is different than zero, we can easily move our projectile by saying that transform.position is going to be plus equal transform.forward multiplied by open bracket speed multiplied by time dot delta time. Let's go ahead and save this and assign this script to the prefab of our projectile. And we can set a speed of 20 and the fire rate of 4 for now. And as soon as we press play, when we click mouse 1, the projectile instantiates. And as you can see, the projectile is moving only in the Z. It's moving forward. And we are going to fix that by creating a script which is called rotate to mouse and rotate to mouse we can assign that to the sphere which will basically rotate the sphere towards our mouse and it's a very simple script where we want a public camera and then we want a public float maximum length we also want a private ray ray mouse and I'm going to explain everything in a moment and we want a private vector position and a private vector direction as well as a private quaternion rotation. So, first things first, we need to create a function which is going to return void and we can name it rotate to mouse direction. Let's open brackets. And this rotate to mouse direction is going to receive a game object, which in this case is going to be the sphere. And it's going to receive a destination, which will be the position of our mouse. And now to get the direction, we say that direction is equal to destination minus our object dot transform dot position. And this will give us a vector that goes from our sphere to our mouse, basically. Next thing we need is the rotation, which is easily calculated with quaternion dot look rotation. Since this will calculate the quaternion between the Z axis and any given vector. So let's give it the direction vector. And finally, now we can rotate our object towards that rotation. And the way we do it is by saying that the local rotation of our object is going to be equal to quaternion.lerp, which will interpolate from the rotation of our object to the rotation we have just calculated. And we can set one at the end so it rotates seamlessly. Alright, great, we are almost done. Now, in the update, we want to say that if cam different than null, we want to do something else, there is no camera. And what we want to do is create the raycast it, a variable for mouse position, which can also be vector3 if you want. 
and it's going to be equal to input dot mouse position and to get the ray mouse which is a ray that we have created we can use cam dot screen point to ray and we can pass in the mouse position and it will convert the mouse position which is a screen point to a ray and we can do a lot of things with the ray for instance we can check if that ray hits something and we can do that with physics ray cast it asks us for the origin and the origin it's in our ray mouse dot origin and the direction it's also in our ray mouse dot direction now if it hits something we are going to output to our ray cast it that we have just created but within a maximum length so we are basically checking if the ray that we have shoot hit something if it hit something we want to use the rotate to mouse direction we want to pass in this game object and the destination is going to be our hit dot point and hit dot point is simply the position of collision of our ray and this else is not supposed to be here sorry all right now let's see how this is working Let's just assign the camera in the inspector and with a maximum length of 40. And as you can see, it's great. Our sphere is rotating towards our mouse. But as soon as we hover the mouse outside of the wall or outside of the ground, the sphere doesn't rotate anymore. And this happens because we are simply saying that if the ray hits something, then rotate our sphere. We just have to say that if it doesn't hit something, then the direction is going to be equal to our ray mouse dot get point with a certain maximum length that we have set in the inspector. And now we can pass that position to our rotate to mouse direction. And as you can see now it rotates towards our mouse independent of where the mouse is and if it is hitting something or not. All right, this is great and this is going to be really useful because at the moment our projectile is not going in the right direction. And we simply need to go to the spawn projectile, create a public reference to our rotate to mouse like this. And now we can say that if rotate to mouse is different than null, then we want to say that the local rotation of our projectile is going to be equal to the rotation of our rotate to mouse script to this rotation right here. So let's create a public function that returns a quaternion. We are going to call it get rotation, and now we simply need to return rotation. Back to our spawn projectile script, we can say that the local rotation of our projectile is going to be equal to rotate to mouse dot get rotation. Now we just only need to assign our rotate to mouse in the inspector which is in the sphere and now let's test this and as soon as we start shooting our projectile it goes in the right direction which is really awesome we only need a few more things like for instance the projectiles don't get destroyed when they hit something and our fire rate is still not working well the fire rate is quite simple to fix. Let's go to our spawn projectile and we don't want to use the down. Down only checks when we click the mouse. Uh, we want to check if the button is held down. So let's remove it and we say that time dot time bigger or equal to time to fire, which is going to be a private float equal to zero. We can say that our time to fire is going to be equal to time dot time plus one divided by the fire rate of our effect to spawn, as you can see, which we can get from the projectile move script. Let's just make sure that when our projectile hits something, it gets destroyed. And we can do that by using void on collision enter, open brackets, create a collision variable. First thing we want to say is that speed is going to be equal to zero and we can destroy our game object. For now it's going to be as simple as this. Let's press save and let's go back to Unity 
and in our prefab instance we want to add box collider which we want to edit to have more or less the same size as our projectile as you can see something like this should be fine and the next thing we need is a rigid body which will not use gravity all right let's press apply disable this instance and let's test this and yay as soon as the projectile hits something it will get destroyed noise and as you may notice our fire rate is also working let's increase it to 10 and it's looking fine looking great you can set any value basically one fire rate is one projectile each second all right great now everything is looking fine we just only need the muzzle flash the heat impact effect and then we are going to implement them so let's create an empty rename this to vfx create a prefab and we can duplicate the beam from the projectile tutorial just like this you can turn off looping we don't need that and start lifetime is going to be much faster this is going to be like a flash so basically between 0.1 and 0.2 should be fine the size can be between 1 and 1.7 let's set maximum particles to 10 and in emission we don't need the rate over time so we can set that to 0 because we are going to use a burst that's going to be between 3 and 5 all right oh yes let's just change the color of a lifetime like this it goes from full opacity to no opacity and the size of our lifetime it goes from big to small let's duplicate the projectile and rename it to muzzle we can turn off the rotation of a lifetime and the size of our lifetime it's going to be equal to beam which means it's going to go from big to small all right we can turn off looping and the start lifetime is also going to be really small between 0.1 and 0.2 the rate over time is also going to be zero because we are also going to use a burst all right that's looking great let's apply the changes to the prefab great and now we need to go back to blender or to your 3d software and from a cube we want to delete one of the faces like this and then make it really small just like this i'm going to rename this to muzzle tutorial i'm going to enter in the edit mode and select everything so we can unwrap just like this we can make it just a little bit smaller yeah, that should be fine and that's it we have our muzzle mesh which we can now export to unity as well now in the muzzle particle system let's go down here to the render mode and select the muzzle we have just created all right so in my case it's really big just gonna set one in the x y and z for now all right so yeah the texture is not looking good and we are going to fix that in just a moment let's just resize this a little bit like this and make 3D start rotation random between 360 and minus 360 in the X axis. And we also need to reset only the position so we can zero the position of the muzzle and of the beam as well. All right, cool. Let me just drag this to here so you can see better how this is working. And let's create some particles which we can duplicate from beam. Rename it to particles and the start size is going to be really small, really tiny. 0 0.05 between 0 0.2. Maximum particles can be 50, I don't know, that's probably too much. And the burst can have between 30 and 50, which is also probably too much. And the start lifetime, it's going to be bigger between 0 0.5 and 1.5. As well as the start speed, which is going to be between 1 and 10. And now we are going to need shape. We're going to need a cone and the radius is going to be around 0 0.1 with an angle of 10 15 should probably be good nice now let's apply the changes to the prefab now let's go to our image editing software so we can create a very simple texture for our muzzle flash and we can create a new file with 500 by 500 paint the black ground to black and we can go ahead and export our uv layout we don't really need but 
you can export it and import it to your image editing software just like this create a new layer and again what i'm going to do is i'm going to start with a bigger brush and i'm going to paint from the center to the outside just like this and then with a smaller brush i start creating some details as well and with the erase tool i erase a few things that are too much in my opinion i paint a little bit more in the inside and then with the smudge tool i give some final touches where i push the white white it's looking cool it's looking great and now we can double click on our layer so we can give it some outer glow again with a size between 60 pixels or 80 pixels and an opacity of 20 maybe even lower all right i think it's looking good just going to give a few more touches now we can hide the muzzle uv and the black background and export this to unity once you're in unity we can duplicate this material and rename it to muzzle just drag and drop the text that you have just created and drag and drop the muzzle material to the muzzle particle system and now we have a much better looking muzzle as you can see it makes all the difference in my opinion and let's apply these changes to the prefab and now to create the impact effect we simply need to duplicate the muzzle effect rename it to hit and let's go to game object here and break prefab instance all right and now we can create a new prefab just by dragging like this and we can make some changes in the beam there should be no changes but in the muzzle we want to actually switch the render mode to billboard all right like this and we can turn off 3d start rotation oh and change the render alignment to view start size is going to be bigger so we can see the texture all right that's looking great let's yeah let's make it random between minus 360 and 360 set the randomized rotation to one as well and now the particles we probably only need to switch the shape to a sphere yeah all right and set the maximum particles to 15 probably and lower the start speed all right that's looking really fine let's apply the changes and we can hide this prefab instance now to implement this in our code we simply need to go to project all move and create two public game objects one for the muzzle prefab and the other one for the heat prefab and in the start we basically say that if muzzle prefab is null then we want to create an instance of that prefab by saying instantiate that muzzle prefab in the position of our projectile quaternion can be an identity just like this and we also want our muzzle to face in the right direction so we are going to say that muzzle.transform.forward is going to be equal to our game object.transform.forward which is basically saying that our muzzle is going to have the forward direction equal to the projectile z axis all right that's looking nice and the non-collision enter we want to spawn our heat prefab our heat effect which we are going to basically say the same thing but now this time we need the contact point we need to know where it hits and we are going to create a contact point variable which is going to be equal to dot contacts the first contact just like this and then we need a quaternion rotation which is going to be equal to quaternion dot from to rotation basically from vector up to contact normal this line is going to do is that it's going to rotate our heat prefab towards the normal of the object colliding with and we also need the position of our contact point which is going to be contact dot point just like this now we can pass the position to our instantiate function and we can also pass the rotation cool and we are done you can press save go back to the inspector and let's just drag and drop our muzzle to our projectile prefab and our heat to the heat prefab just like this and let's test this out and yes it's looking really great we can see that the muzzle rotates in the right direction which is in the direction of our projectile and the heat 
is also being instantiated as soon as our projectile hits something. Great, it's looking fine, we just need a little thing, because as you can see, we are instantiating all of these effects, but we are not destroying them. And this is easily fixed by going to our projectile move, create a variable called PS muzzle, which is going to hold the particle system of our muzzle. And we can say that if this PS muzzle is different than null, then we can destroy our muzzle according to the main duration of the particle system. And we are going to see what it is in just a moment. Else, if the muzzle effect doesn't have any particle system, we are going to pick the first particle system of the children and also say that we are going to destroy according to the main duration of particle system of the child of our muzzle. And we can basically copy and paste these two right down here for our it effects where we can rename the PS muzzle by double clicking it and pressing F2 and now we can rename it to PS it and it changes also the other variables. You can just copy and paste it VFX right here and right there. All right, so that is done. And now, as you can see in our muzzle prefab, we don't have any particle system in the parent, but we have in the first child. And it's going to pick this duration right here, which it's convenient if this duration is equal to the particle system that has particles that have the most duration, which in this case, it's going to be the particles, which has a maximum start lifetime of 1.5. So yeah, it's, it's convenient if we set the duration of our beam to 1.5 so it doesn't destroy before every particle is fade out. And we can do the same thing for the heat. That's right, that's great. Let's test this out. And yeah, it's looking really great. And the muzzle and the heat and the projectile is destroying, are being destroyed as soon as they hit something, or as soon as all the particles of the effect fade out, as you can see, which is nice, it's really great. And that's it guys, I hope you have learned something cool today. If you are able to, I will appreciate a lot if you can support my Patreon page, it means a lot to me. I want to say a big thank you to all the Patreon supporters of the last month. You guys are awesome. And that's it guys, thanks for watching, see you in the next video.